Live from New York. <clears throat> Alan, it's going to be so great just working with you. I mean, live TV. No, I no, mean... no, no, it's okay. It's okay, honey. It's all right, Chris. Chris? Yeah, we are back together again. I'm, okay, I'm, not, I'm not Chris. Live I'm... from New York. I'm not, oh. I'm not Chris. Tracy? No, Tracy it's, Morgan, no, it's this Kareem. is Saturday Night Live. What? No, that's a rap, Ellen. That's, that's a rap. What are you talking this about? This is Axis TV. Axis TV? Live from New York, it's Gotham Comedy Live. Tonight on Access TV, it's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with... Lisa Ann Walter, Stone and Stone, Kareem Green. This week's host, Ellen Cleghorn. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Ellen Cleghorn. Five shows in, and they asked me. I am so happy to be here. My name is Ellen Cleghorn. In punto se cabo. And I'm a native New Yorker. Most people know me from, yeah, yeah. I grew up, yeah, um, okay. Uh, no, I grew up in Red Hook. Yeah. Red Hook Project's not Red Hook now with the trendy mess. <laughs> with Ikea and carrions on. No, I grew up when it was like, you know, not, you know, I got, I got street cred. I got street cred and I just got my PhD from NYU. <laughs> on so don't fuck with me because I will write a 20 page essay on your ass. <laughs> Chicago, MLA, <laughs> and I'll publish it in an academic journal that nobody reads. <laughs> you wanna bring it? Bring it, bitch! <laughs> bring it! <laughs> now, most people know me from SNL, and which I had a great time. I was on for four years. I was, uh, I did one, one year, one year as a, um, one year as like a, feature player and then three years as a cast member and in those you know and then in between when I wasn't in sketches because you know I'm black uh, I would babysit the people's kids make some extra money on the side but I had to use my West Indian accent because them all have them kind of girl from Trinidad them what mind the baby oh Jesus looks see you first time you looked me in my eye because you, you see how beautiful I am, and it broke your face. <laughs> no, because you're kind of cute. And she was like, hmm. well, all right. <laughs> I know black girls. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're Trini? What, Jamaican? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> it gets to be like that. No, it's all right, because we're all, we're all, we're all African-Americans once we get here and get our green card. Mm -hmm. Not so much. <laughs> all right. Uh, no, I do. I love America. I love Brooklyn. I love everything. And so today, I'm a native near, so things don't really, you know, bother me that much. I'm looking for a job teaching in a university, but then they had that shooting today, and I'm thinking twice. Oh. Said, Shit. What the hell is wrong with white people? <laughs> he said, yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about it? I'll listen, No, It's deep. Is it the penis size? Is that where it <laughs> No comment? It's okay. No, did I drop the bomb? <laughs> so I, I, I'm a tall girl, so this is just like the way I think because I see the world from up here. And it really get <laughs> I, I am so, I'm not, I'm not circus tall. You know what I mean? Like people say, oh my God, you're so tall. I cannot work in a circus. I will not be found in the Guinness Book of World Records. I'm just tall, it's okay. But I don't need you to tell me, I know. And I, I, I don't, you know, people say, oh my gosh, did you used to play basketball? <laughs> Do you see these cheekbones? <laughs> these shoulders? 
No, I'm not a supermodel. I used to play football. <laughs> That's right. Defensive tackle, wood, wood, hook. But I like being told because in New York, people think that when you're told that you're generous and kind and they just, people just come up to me and talk, oh, can you reach that, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> when I grew up in Red Hook, people always say, can you come with me to the bank? Because I want you to reach up and unplug that surveillance camera. <laughs> So now I'm told with the criminal record. <laughs> it's so wonderful. And so I'm back here in New York. I, I, I kind of live here, kind of don't. But anyway, that's not the important part. Today, something really traumatic happened. I was going in Times Square. You know where the seven shuttle train goes from Times Square to um, Grand Central? And I was walking, just walking, mind my business. And this guy comes up to me and says, excuse me, can I ask you a question? All right. He said, what size is your areola? <laughs> Cross my heart and hope to die. Now, I'm walking from a job interview, so I'm thinking esoteric. I'm thinking curriculum. So when he said that, my brain went to, and I know that word. <laughs> Where do I know that word from? <laughs> Baby, bend over. Let me see your areola. No, when, <laughs> What, what does, and, and he kept talking, he said, is it the circumference of a dime? <laughs> and I'm still trying to figure out what does it mean? I, I know, I know this. Is it the circumference of a nickel? Is it the circumference of a quarter? I know this. Is it like a half a dollar? And then it hit me, oh, I'm being sexually molested. <laughs> For the love of God. And then I said, I, you know, and I, I really don't know because I've been spending time with white people. So I just said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, well, you want to show it to me? I'll tell you. And I was like, oh, honey, I'm on my way downtown to do a show for some rich people. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I'm a transvestite. <laughs> These are not my real breasts. And I don't think you can afford for me to show them to you. <laughs> Since you're so familiar with change size. <laughs> it's so much that happens. I mean, this is New York. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tough, so it doesn't really bother me. I got mugged one time in New York. I got mugged. Yeah, anybody got here mugged? Yeah, yeah, everybody said, yes, so what? <laughs> I was, I was up in the Dominican Republic on 143rd and Broadway. <laughs> it was late at night, I was walking, and I wasn't really paying attention because as you can see, I'm an airhead. <laughs> and I was just talking to myself, and all of a sudden I felt somebody pull on my, sh my bag, and I was like, what the fuck? And I turned around, and this man started screaming at me, dame su bolsa, dame lo, dame lo! <laughs> And I speak a little Spanish, because I live in the Dominican Republic. And then a part of me just got calm, and I said, wait a minute, where's the gun? <laughs> I'm waiting for him to pull out a weapon. He's just screaming at me, dame la bolsa, dame la, dame la. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Do you know how much I paid for this coach bag? <laughs> Get no coach bag by screaming at motherfuckers. <laughs> Maybe in the Dominican Republic, but this America. You better bring something, a weapon. <laughs> so I snatched my bag back and I reached in my bag and I took out my gun and I took his wallet. <laughs> today and I really really thank you all for coming out give yourselves a round of applause we have a wonderful wonderful show we have a great 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 show we got four comedy acts coming to the stage they're gonna make you laugh they're gonna make you happy we'll be right back stay tuned for more laughs on access tv live from
from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Corey Jarvis is taking the stage when we return. And stick around later tonight for Ellen Cleghorn when she takes the stage. No, you know why Hollywood doesn't give me any movies anymore? Because they think I don't know how to act anything else but retarded. <laughs> That's how convincing I was going, ah, 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 ah. You know, it's really pathetic. I can't even get a fucking small part in a movie anymore because I'm too recognizable and they won't be able to concentrate on the two main actors in the front. Is that fucked up? Even like, even like a medieval film with like hundreds of horses coming over the mountaintop, you people are crying. You're like, oh my God, this is a fantastic. Is that probably showing a horse? <laughs> shit. That's the wheels on the horse. Turn this shit off. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage this evening with his own amazing comedy stylings. You've seen him on his own web series, Corey Makes Movies, right? Please welcome to the stage, Corey Jarvis. Make some noise. Yes. 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 Hello. How are you guys? You're really good. All right. That's awesome. Now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put this out there. I think life is a little bit easier for a guy when you got a little bit of toughness. You know what I mean? Right? I didn't get any of that. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Am I scaring any of you right now? You're laughing when I ask you that. Because I'm the guy you ask directions from. Do you understand? You're like, I need to find the Empire State Building and you look like you have some Disney songs on your iPod. I could walk down the street with a knife in my hand. You guys would be like, oh, he's probably gonna help some old lady cut some apples for a pie. That's where I'm at. I got made fun of all the time when I was, people said terrible things. Worst thing I heard was, dude, you look gay. That would make me angry when I was younger. Now that I'm older and I have some gay friends and I see the lifestyle they're living, somebody tells me, dude, you look gay. I'm like, really? <laughs> You think so? You mean I look like I'm in the greatest shape of my life? I have multiple sex partners and I take eight vacations a year? You look kind of gay yourself, my friend. <laughs> Saying they got a good lifestyle. I was, uh, no, people don't believe this when I tell them. I was in the military for four years, you guys. That was a, yeah, that's the reaction I usually get. No, no, no. You were too late on that one. You're like, this is a joke right here. He's gonna say something funny. It's real, okay? I was in there. There's a, there was a, okay, too late, dude. There was, a, there was a woman in the audience one night. She's like, oh, that's why we're losing the wars. Yeah, that's how I felt. But I know why she thinks that, and I know why all of you guys think that, okay? Because everyone's been brainwashed by movies, you guys. Most of you have never been in the military, so all you know about is what you see on, in movies, right? So everybody thinks the military now is Brad Pitt sitting on a tank or Arnold Schwarzenegger running through a hail of bullets and not getting shot. That's not the military. This is the military right here. I wish that were the military, right? All the most handsome buff dudes sent overseas to fight, only guy left for you to date, right here. That would work out, right? They declare war, I go from a six to a 10 overnight. That's a, she's like, you're a four, dude, stop it. It's all the eyes, the eyes don't lie. <laughs> I, it's just not right. You know, because you, when you're watching a war movie, you know right away, like you look at it, you go, that handsome guy? He's gonna make it to the end of the war, right? The ugly dude, dying in the first battle. So I told my friends, I said, dude, I'm joining the military. They're like, Corey. I'm not saying you're ugly, but you don't really have what it takes to make it to the end of the war, do you know what I'm saying? Maybe better, get a better haircut, you might make it to the second battle or something like that, but. 
because I've seen movies, Corey, and everybody knows the bullet is going to go around Brad Pitt and hit Steve Buscemi while he's making everybody coffee. <laughs> That's the way it works. I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up. It's real. I, uh, I got married a little while ago, you guys. That was uh, a <laughs> new experience. I like it. I like it. My wife's a wonderful woman. She's uh, she's Japanese, uh, not not Japanese American, like Japanese Japanese, right? Yeah, I didn't order her, guys. I see some of your eyes. I know the stereotype, you know, nerdy white guy, Asian girl needs a green card. I understand, but we got to break that stereotype, you guys. You got to understand, she's from the third largest economy in the world. I've got five hundred dollars in the bank. She ordered me. All right. Straight out of the clearance section. She's like, I'll take the one with the butt crack haircut. There we go. <laughs> He's not going to cheat on me. Won't have a chance. <laughs> she's, she's very Japanese. She does, she's still acclimated. She does weird stuff sometimes. Like she, she's, she bows on the phone when she says thank you. I'm like, I'm like, they can't see you. She's like, they feel it. <laughs> Makes me eat everything with chopsticks. Takes me like an hour to finish a burrito now. We watch a Discovery Channel Ocean special. She thinks we're watching the Food Network. She's like, everything looks delicious on this program. That's a shark, honey. They eat us. That's the way it is. I had to get married, though. I had to get married, because I'm getting older. And I know I'm getting older, because I'm getting more scared of stuff that I wasn't scared of when I was younger. Roller coasters. I'm not going on them anymore, right? You know? And you never see old people on roller coasters, right? That's right. And it's not because their bodies are too frail. It's because they're close enough to death that they don't need it simulated. <laughs> I'm going to die! I'm just messing with you. That's all it is, over and over. And I don't know if you guys have been to Six Flags in New Jersey, the amusement park. They figured out a way to make roller coasters twice as scary without spending any extra money. Because they've hired teenagers to run the whole park. <laughs> like Lord of the Flies two years later. Like, we killed Piggy. Let's go get some jobs. I get to the top of the hill. I'm looking down. I'm like, I'm really scared right now. I look back. Justin Bieber's running the ride. I'm like, I'm going to die. This is it for me right here. I'm a, uh, I'm a big fan of science fiction. No, you guys are just doing that because there's cameras here. I understand. The rest of you guys are like, we know, Dungeon Master. <laughs> we could see that when you walked on stage, buddy. I love it. I love it. I, I get it. Like, if you're not into it, I totally understand. Like, I don't think aliens are going to come down to Earth and fight us the way that we fight each other. That makes no sense, okay? Because think about it, you guys. Human bodies, not very strong, right? I don't care how tough you think you are, right? You get a paper cut, you're crying all day, right? <laughs> You get a toothache, you can't go to work tomorrow, right? I bought a shirt at the Gap last week with a hard tag in the back. I couldn't do anything all day long. <laughs> We're going to be the little bitches of the galaxy, you guys. Okay? We still have people dying from food allergies. First wave of the attack, the aliens are just going to sprinkle peanuts all over the planet. <laughs> Everyone with a nut allergy, poof, done right there. <laughs> Hand me the anal probe, I'll do it myself, all right? My wife, uh, she doesn't like sci-fi. Try to get her to go to the movies. She's like, no, it's not realistic. And then she's like, let's go watch a romantic comedy. <laughs> Does that make sense to anybody? No, because science fiction is way more realistic than any romantic comedy out there, okay? There is way more chance that there are two guys in a galaxy far, far away having a lightsaber fight than there is of some Mitt Romney rich guy marrying his prostitute. <laughs> I'm just saying, ladies, think about this, all right? You ruin our relationships with those movies, all right? Because you guys grew up watching them, and now you expect us to behave that way, all right? But guess what? We grew up watching porn. <laughs> and we are just as disappointed as you are right now, okay? I'm Corey Jarvis. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Lisa Ann Walter is taking the stage when we return. Gentlemen, we're going to keep this show going. We are going to keep it going. You are here at 
at Gotham Comedy Live, and it is airing live right now. Right now. Right now, Randy. On ASX. Coming to the stage to keep you really, really entertained. Somebody I know very well. Her name is Lisa and Walter, and you know her from TVs and movies, especially The Parent Trap. Please make her feel welcome. Lisa and Walter. Thank you, Ellen. Give it up for Ellen. She's standing right there. Brilliant. Corey, everybody's seeing. You guys having fun? That's what I like to hear. I am personally thrilled to be here, thrilled beyond measure, because I have 14-year-old twin boys at home, so I'm just happy to be in front of people that like me. Thank you. They're awful. I'm, I'm just so, I'm gonna catch you up real quick so you know what you're dealing with. For the next few minutes, I've got four kids, because my vagina is a clown car. <laughs> Four kids, two ex-husbands, first one lovely Jewish man turned out to be gay. Whoops. <laughs> that happens. Second one, cheater, which is not technically a religion, but he practiced it like it was. <laughs> All right, okay, so you got what we're working with tonight? All right, buckle up, because the shit's gonna get live. Okay. <laughs> Just answer me this, because I've never had brothers. I didn't grow up with teenage boys. So if, does anybody have teenage boys? Or if you used to be a teenage boy, answer me this, mom, please. What's up with the smell? What? It's, I can't, I make this face when I pick them up. That's not nice. It's not, it, and it's strong. And what is it? She's like my Aunt Yola all of a sudden. It's gross. It's not just balls, people. Let's get it on the table. Because if it was, I'd understand. It's not, it's, that's testosterone, we forgive. It's like balls and wet dog and meth lab and Cheetos. That's a face reserved for my first autopsy. It's not a picking up my kid's face. They're interesting because they're mirror twins. I was weird. I was in the parent trap and I had mirror twins. So they're opposites. So one of them's like a right-handed, mathlete, football-playing straight kid. And the other one's like a jazz-handing, musical theater, also straight kid. God damn it, I got two straight ones. I wanted one gay kid. Somebody to pluck my chin hairs and redecorate my room at the home. Now, you know what I'm talking about? Want somebody to call me a hoot when I bitch about my senior meal at Denny's. I miss old school gay. Do you know what I'm talking about? We had it in the 90s, like Outre, Priscilla Queen of the Desert. Ooh, ooh, that gay. I miss that. That was fun as shit. It was like political activism slash cocaine orgy. We had fucking fun. All gay guys in L.A. now are like wearing Dockers and watching NASCAR. I don't know what the fuck goes on. I miss it, man. I used to be proud. I was proud. You can't even say the word anymore. I don't care. I'm going to say it to you because you're my new friends and who watches Access. I'm saying it. I used to be proud to call myself a fag hag. I'm not allowed to say that anymore. No, I can't. Now, I'm just a hag. Speaking of hag, I'm dating in L.A. Now oh, that's magical. <laughs> All right, it's the land where prom queens go to die. Let me just fill you in. When they put a crown on her head, every prom queen in America gets on the first bus to L.A. to be an actress. Three of them make it. The rest of them are serving you pancakes at IHOP, and their dental hygiene is completely fucking up the bell curve of beauty, all right? So you got a bunch of spoiled asshole guys and a bunch of idiot girls pretending to be purse designers. He's all proud of her. So you got a 60-year-old guy with a 20-year-old girl with three-year-old tits and lips that still have the tag hanging off of them. Oh, she's brilliant. She designs purses. No, she doesn't. Shut up, Crip Keeper. She does not. She's an idiot, and so are you. So I dated 
so wait, so wait, I got eight minutes, I gotta hurry up. I dated the young ones for a while because I got divorced in LA, it's the law. So I had the young boyfriend and he said, they're nice. He was very enthusiastic. It's like having a puppy with an iPad and a 24 hour hard on. Seriously, no finesse about it. They just poke you in the back. Like, did I fall asleep on the remote? Oh, it's your dick. Oh. A little too enthusiastic. If I could be helpful, because I like to be informative and funny. Young guys, or if you know any young guys, don't get so enthusiastic with my area. Just can you calm down, okay? I know you're very goal-oriented. I blame video games. I understand. But my area is not World of Warcraft, okay? <laughs> My clitoris, for the most part, is not an orcish death knight. Just ease it up a little bit. Don't go at me like I'm a vending machine that took your change. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> um, no, stop it, stop. So, I went on match, also magical. And I have a little more advice if you're a guy on match or you know anybody who is, stop posting pictures of your motorcycle, okay? I don't, nobody gives a shit. I don't wanna fuck your bike, okay? I know, I understand, your bitch ex-wife wouldn't let you ride and now you're all excited because you get to play Let's Pretend Sons of Anarchy. I get it. You're not a one percenter, just stop, okay? You're not Jax Teller keeping Charming safe from the Irish Kings. You're Gary Rosenbaum DDS keeping Paramus safe from gingivitis. Let's <laughs> calm down. You want to impress me? Don't show me pictures of your Harley soft tail. Give me a profile shot without a hat so I can see what I'm dealing with hairline wise. <laughs> All right, your girlfriends, when, you, when you're breaking up, your girlfriends will be like your animal, right? Like they're your fucking beast. You just, they support you. And they'll lie to you after you break up. Like, girl, you didn't need him anyway. He was an, all your girlfriends, by the way, turn into Cookie Lion from Empire after a breakup. <laughs> you didn't need him. He's an asshole. Me and Tisha both fucked him. He was a dick. You don't need him. You can take care of your own needs. I'm like, yeah, but I've been taking care of my own needs so long I got carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> my shower massage had a dental plan, I'd marry it. <laughs> the guys are groaning. Oh. These are masturbation jokes. Look how you clammed up, and I don't use that word accidentally. <laughs> Women are embarrassed to talk about, like, you know, they're, we're embarrassed because we don't have cute names for it. If guys, have, guys have cute names for it, so they talk about it. They're like, what are you doing this weekend, Jim? I plan on shaking hands with a bald-headed champ. That's what... <laughs> If women had cute names for it, we'd brag about it too. We'd be like, what are you doing this weekend, Marge? I am wetting down the old slip and slide. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm feather dusting the Oval Office. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm finger painting my Georgia O'Keeffe. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Art lovers. All right, I gotta go because uh, I don't have a hot date. I just gotta pick up milk and poster board. <laughs> parents. But uh, before I go, uh, my ex always used to talk, I know I sound bitter, I know, and I don't care. I don't give a shit. He used to be like, you're so bitter. I'm like, you know what? I didn't get here myself, asshole, all right? You kind of nudged me into bitter, babysitter fucker. <laughs> it's a true story. So I had a therapist for five minutes. She fired me because I uh, was loud and I didn't pay her. But she gave me a good piece of advice. She said, write down why you're mad. Write it down. That way when he asks you, you say, this is why I'm mad. So this is why single mothers get so frustrated. This is what I do every day, week after week, all year long. You ready? Buckle up. It's coming at you fast. Ready? Here you go. Gently wake them up for school. Pick up wet towels from the bathroom because they didn't do it. Make their lunches because they didn't do it. Get them up for school again because they ignored me. Feed the dogs because they didn't do it. Now we're late. Threaten to pour water on the twins still ignoring me about getting up. Take everyone's phone as punishment for being called a bitch. <laughs> Buy groceries, carry them in, put them away, cook a chicken, a pot roast, and chili. Set up appointments with teachers because of low grades. Take games off everyone's phone because of low grades. Take games and porn off everyone's laptop. <laughs> Because of low grades, limit shower time to 20 minutes because taking the porn off the laptops. <laughs> Search through files for two hours to find vaccination records. Take pictures of them to send a football because I have to have them in today or I can't play. 
race to pitch meeting, painting my roots in the rear view mirror while driving, cut pitch, pitch meeting, short to race, back to volunteer at football snack bar, sweat tits off in the snack bar for four hours, wrangle everyone into the car, stop at Taco Bell, cause I'm starving. <laughs> Beg everyone to go to bed, referee fight over who's showering first, remind everyone to turn on alarm clock, turn off light, go to bed, deep breathe, try to relax, jump out of bed, referee fight over who threw the laptop and who, because he wouldn't stop playing music. <laughs> Yell at everyone to shut up and stop fighting, go back to bed, attempt to finger paint my Georgia O'Keefe. <laughs> Jump out of bed, referee fight over who set the alarm. No one did it. Turn light back off, go to bed, yell, yell at everyone, shut the fuck up and go to sleep. That's what I did. Here's what, here's, here's what he did. Bought him an iPhone 6. Guess who's the hero? The babysitter fucker. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Stone and Stone is taking the stage when we return. We got any fans of the zombie show, The Walking Dead, huh? Yeah. Walking Dead fans? The Walking Dead, you know, from the name, I thought it was a biography of Keith Richards at first. <laughs> I don't know why people are so fascinated with zombies, you know? If you want to see a bunch of brain-dead people in dirty clothes walking around drooling, just go to a NASCAR race. <laughs> Here's something I don't understand about zombies. If you're a vegetarian, you become a zombie. What the fuck do you eat? <laughs> they offer me a role on The Walking Dead, not as an actor, as a buffet for the zombies. <laughs> Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. No, no, no. You stay out of it. Mind your business. <laughs> no, I, I caught this black man not clapping. I said, please, come on. Let's, let's stick together. <laughs> we have more show, or did you enjoy Lisa Ann? Was she amazing? We have more show. Just when you thought we couldn't have any more show, we got more show. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage from last comic standing, this comic stylings of Stone and Stone. Put your hands together. Hey, thank so hi, thank you. And this works. We're, we're and hi, guys, how are you? Awesome. We've done this before. Done before Don't worry. Work you look a little scared, but it's fine. This is cool. Yeah. Anyway, wow. yeah, hi, everyone. Let You're good. Here. Yeah, are you okay, standing good. in the right yes. We're both in the light. We're good. Both of us Don't are seen. Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. Okay, Sorry. anyway, we, we are twins. Yeah. And, mm. um, and yes, thank you. I'm Adam. This is Todd. Todd, yeah. And I am married, as you can see. And thank you. And she is Israeli. And I'm Jewish, so it's kind of like a big deal, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 I'm also Jewish, so it was exciting for me, too. You yeah, know? It's exactly. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also exciting for yeah. me. And believe it or not, her name is Mahor. Mm. And I, yes. And I love introducing her to people. You know when I introduce her to you? Sure I do. Like to him, I'll say like, this is my brother and this is Mahor. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. 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 yeah, and I love talking baby talk to her. I say, who's Mahor? You're Mahor. Yeah. She looks a little like you. You do look a little yeah, bit like but her. but that's okay, that's but, I mean, great, I love Mahor. She's an attractive woman. Yeah. You know, she's not, yeah, yeah, so are you. Exactly. Don't be nervous, yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I was at a party recently. We were both at the party, yeah. but I was just speaking to this couple. They were also married, and I asked them how they met. And they said, the army. Um, or at least that's what I, I thought I heard them say. I later found out that they said e-harmony. And, yeah. yeah. And so I didn't know that at the time. So I said to them, I said, thank you. Because I say that to people who are in the service, you know? And so they didn't know what I was talking about. So they were like, for what? And I said, for your bravery, you know? For your willingness to do something that not everyone's willing to do, you know? 
And they were like, wow, we've never thought of it like that before. And I said, you should. You two are American heroes, you yeah. know? That's so great. that's good. That's yeah. really nice, yeah. Adam. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's a, a sweet story. Thank you. you know? yeah. Yeah. I mean, so Adam, you know, Adam has is my whore, and he's married, and yeah. I'm single, and he was talking about dating uh, sites, and, and I've been on a whole lot of dating websites, and, and I find it really irritating. I, I've been on a lot of them. I, I was... Uh, I find it's really cliche for girls to write that they like to travel. Yeah. Because they all like to travel. Yeah. I want to travel here travel and there. Here and, there and experience and just want to travel. And cuisines and, and yeah. cultures. And I found it so irritating. I thought to myself, maybe if you just stay put, you'd find someone. Yeah, you know? exactly. Just stop moving. Stop moving around. Stop moving. Yes. Yeah. You're doing fine. Yeah. You're Thank doing you. great. Any of you who are single, just stay put. Because she hasn't moved at all. Someone yeah, you're will doing come great. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. in addition, so the speed dating, whatever. Yeah. So I, I was also, I was in an elevator recently. Big deal, by myself, all alone. Yeah. And I know, I know. Yeah. I did it. And so I was in the elevator, and um, the doors open, and this, this girl came in the elevator, um, and not like a girl, but like a, a yeah, you know, yeah. like someone my age, and she came in into the elevator, and, and the doors closed. He said, was it you? Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so, so the doors closed and um, we started going down in the elevator and it was completely silent. And she broke the silence by saying, you smell. <laughs> I know, which is weird. So I said, like what? I was curious, you know? And she said, bad. So I know. So at this point I could tell she was flirting with me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. yeah. Like good bad, like sexy bad, yeah. Like, yeah. like dirty bad. And so... Um, so yeah, I, you know that's where I go, you know, dirty. You know. And so she took a little step, uh, you know, away from me, and I thought she was trying to play hard to get, you know, yeah, like still sexy. And then she, she I, so I took, a, you know, a step closer to her, yeah. right? Um, and then she pressed some emergency button, which yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, hard it to is. meet women. It and can be very you, hard. Adam, it yeah. can be very hard. Anyway, yeah. I want to talk about transportation now. Yeah. Do you guys? How many people here drive? Drivers, I know we're in Manhattan, cool. there's not many cars, but yeah. nice. We know how to drive, but we don't have a car. So sometimes if we need a car, we'll borrow our mother's car. Mm. Thank you for laughing at that. Yeah. And so we were here in the city, and we were driving. I was driving, Todd was in the passenger yeah. seat, and I accidentally, we were at a light, and I took my foot off the brake accidentally, and we crashed into the car ahead of us. Yeah. And I had never been into an accident in my life. It was a couple miles an hour, but it was, it was like a, a light tap. It was a it big wasn't deal a big for deal. me. It was yeah. a big deal, so I was freaking out. So I got out of the car. The guy who I hit gets out of his car, and I said, I'm so sorry, sir. Should we call the police or an ambulance? You were right. Are you okay? And he just looked at me, and he said, no problem, mate. It's a rentu. <laughs> And I said, what? And he said, it's a rentu, mate. It's a freaking rentu. Kick it, mate. And he starts kicking his own car. He's like, kick it, mate. It's a rentu. He's like, spit on it. Spit on it. So I reluctantly like spat on his car. You know what I mean? I was like, hey. He's like, he's like, it's a rentu. It's a rentu. And I just love this guy's attitude on life. You know? It's like, if something isn't yours, it's worthless. You know? Yeah, that makes I like sense. that. I it's like, it's a rentu. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I yeah. feel like I was there. Thank you. Know, you. That's great. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, I went to my uh, doctor recently. We used to go together, but I went alone. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it was for a checkup. And the doctor said that my cholesterol was a little high. And so she said that I have to start running. And I said, well, I don't like running. What about walking? And she said, no. She said, walking doesn't do it because you need at least 20 minutes of a very elevated heart rate. So I said, well, what if I just got really nervous? Yeah. You know, like, would that do it? And she couldn't think of a reason why that wouldn't work. So, yeah, so I've told you. Yeah. So what I do now is, is every other day I go to my local Dwayne Reed and I start shoplifting. Yeah. And, wow. yeah. and it's and really good. I get very does. nervous. And he looks and, great. And he I, really does. It's I really mean, good. And then know. I go around and I put it back and yeah. I feel better. Yeah. I, I feel yeah. healthier. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't seen him before, but yeah, he really yeah. looks wonderful. He's I lost do. a lot of weight. Thank you, know, you. Which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, so that's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, our... our yeah, um, thank you. Very, you guys are wonderful, really. Yeah. Um, particularly anyway. you. I can feel that, by yes, the way. You know, yeah. Anyway, sorry. She's been touching me. Yeah. No, a a sorry. Yeah. No, no. Anyway. Stop it. So, anyway. um, are you guys familiar with the phrase, in between jobs? 
You know that, you know that right? Phrase, you know, yeah. It means you're unemployed, right? Yeah. yeah. And so we really like that expression, that phrase, because it's very positive, yeah. right? Because you may never find another job again, yeah. right? You know? Yeah. yeah. But, but, but more positive. likely than not, you will. Yeah. And so we think you can apply that phrase to other areas of your life. So, for instance, you know, if you're single, you can just say, oh, I'm in, I'm in between girlfriends or boyfriends, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or if you've been sad, say, for a really long time, you could just say, oh, I'm just in between joyous times. Yeah. 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 Like that. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... Uh, um, speaking of jobs, I actually used to work in a magazine, and um, this guy, I, I was at a party, and this guy asked me what I did, and I told him that I worked in a magazine. Um, and he said, you know, magazines are going to die, so you should get out of that. So I said, well, you know, you're going to die, so should I back out of this yeah, conversation? Yeah, may as well stop yeah, talking exactly. since we're all going to die. so rude of him. Yeah, that yeah. show him for being rude Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Anyway, well, you, you guys, guys have been great. great. Thank you so much. Thank you. on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Kareem Green is taking the stage when we return. time. We have got a line up for y'all. Is anybody having a good time? <laughs> Got the Comedy Live is on fire on Access TV. Coming to the stage, you know we always save the best for last. He was a three-time Apollo champion. Please put your hands together. Make him feel welcome so he don't hit you. Mr. Kareem Green, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right. All right, stop it, stop it. All right, stop it. Stop acting like y'all know me. Now, nah, I live in New York right now, but I'm originally from my daddy's nuts, just to let you know. We all are. We are. I mean, you some pink nuts, but some brown nuts, but you know, still the nuts. Now, I grew up in foster homes, you know, I'm from a little bit everywhere, you know, and it taught us to share. We had to deal with this thing called hand-me-downs. You ever heard of hand-me-downs? Yeah. Heard, yo, you know about that? Yeah, I never had that luxury. I had hand me overs. I'm like, hand me over that shirt. I can't wait you to grow out of that. Nah, you're trying to wait for it to go out of style. I know what you're up to. In the morning, the best dressed person was whoever woke up first. You wake up too late, you end up in school in a tank top and flip flops. You'd be mad as hell. Kids looking at you like, why you dressed like that? Somebody unplugged my alarm clock. <laughs> I knew I wanted to wear that hand me over. <laughs> I couldn't get that many girls, you know, because I ain't dressed that nice. You know, so what I used to think about doing is don't judge me. I used to think about going home and having sex with my foster sisters. <laughs> whoa, 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 you judging. I can see you judging. You judging. I thought about it, I ain't do it. Come on, man. But there's two thoughts going on in here right now. The fellas are like, you wasn't related. <laughs> <laughs> the women are like, ugh. Because I told that to this girl one time, and she's looking at me, she almost threw it. She's like, oh my God, how you, look <laughs> up. How you gonna think about <laughs> How you gonna think about having sex with your foster sister? What if you'd have did that and she would have got pregnant? Then what? Then we would have had a foster child. <laughs> then we both be getting the check. That's what I'm talking about. It's a win-win. Everybody wins. 
I had my first sexual experience in the foster home, too. I remember her name. It was Silly. <laughs> Silly Pastapedic. <laughs> Come on, now. I ain't the only bed humper in here. I ain't the only... You look like a former bed humper yourself, sir. <laughs> I know my people. <laughs> I was a freak with it. I used to go to other people's house, find their mattress, like, ooh, what's your name, Craftmatic? I'm flexible. It's a freak. Always kept it safe, though. Kept the fitted sheet on, you know. Didn't catch no bed bugs. Too young for that. I realized something, too, man. Being in them homes, you know, you, you got to get used to change, you know. That's one thing about us. We gotta, we, everybody can just like, learn to get used to change. Everything changes, you know? Especially for Bruce Jenner, man, I tell you, bro. Oh, uh, calm down. Listen. Her 48 butt cheeks just tighten up. I'm strong on that side. You can't say nothing about this dude, especially in front of white people. Y'all, <laughs> not Bruce. <laughs> he, he's so courageous. He's so courageous. <laughs> Come on, man. He ain't even the first one who did that. Y'all remember RuPaul? Yeah, he did it years ago. And to me, he did it better. He, he dressed better, he sang, he danced, and he did the voice. That's what get on my nerves with Bruce. He won't do the damn voice. He lazy. All you doing is scaring the kids. That's all. <laughs> you know you can be anything you want to be. You can be anything you want to be. <laughs> kids scared of them. <laughs> why, why that lady got a daddy voice? <laughs> Parents are like, shh, he got a daddy voice. Got a daddy voice. Then he gonna wait till he's 65, you know. Then name himself Caitlin. Come on, man. Caitlin? Caitlin? That's a young, hot, white girl name. He's supposed to be like a Barbara or Betty. Gertrude or Ethel. A Blanche. Oh, damn, Caitlin. <laughs> I'm like, hey, 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 ain't that Gertrude? Ain't that Gertrude Jenner over there? <laughs> nah, I think that's Blanche. <laughs> sure ain't no Caitlin, that's for sure. <clears throat> got the cover of Vanity Magazine. Natural Born Women can't get that cover. He got it, though. Yeah. My thing is, he was on there with bloomers on, man. Y'all know, bloomer, period panties. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fellas, y'all know what I'm talking about. You acting like you don't know what I'm talking about. You know, you, know, you showed up to that girl's house. You're like, come on, man. I ain't drive 30 minutes to cuddle. <laughs> Pissed off. <laughs> it's true. Let me tell you something, ladies. He's moving into your territory. So you're going to really have to compete. You know, when you get that brand new 2015 vagina, then what you gonna do? You can't compete with that. I'm tell look, y'all look good, you look beautiful, but you ain't got no 2015. No, you don't. That's right. You can't compete with no 2015, no brand new 2015 hot pocket. You can't compete. That's right. What you got, 94? When the 94? 96? When the 96? Can't compete with that. Come on now. <laughs> oh, elderly vaginas up in here. If we all be quiet, we can hear all the old vaginas just breathing. It's 2015. Young, happy, fun, enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 94. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Kareem Green, thank y'all very much. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Follow me on Twitter at, at Ellen Clayhorn, and make sure you watch me on the Food Network, uh, Worst Cooks in America Celebrity, or every Wednesday, okay? So now let's um, bring all of the comics back onto the stage. 